Hi, YouTube. Okay. I'm Lindsay. Welcome to my channel. I freaking love to read. I just love sharing books. I love reading books. I love hearing about different books. I love researching books, reviewing books. Reading just has a special place in my heart and I am just so excited to do this video. My goal was 30 books, but I think I read like, let's see. 13 books. I'm not gonna beat myself up for it. I had a whole baby. I read some amazing books this year and I am so excited to share. Okay, I mainly read fiction books. I'm going more towards some nonfiction books, but with fiction, I just go into this whole different, it's like your whole different world. They're better than movies. This is gonna be my top five books that I read this year, but I'm gonna um, start off from like one book to my absolute favorite book. I did change my reading goal to 20 books this year instead of 30, so I am gonna try and accomplish that this year. So, we'll just get into the video. Number five, All the Bright Places by Jennifer Naveen. This book, man, oh my gosh. I, th I still think about this book this year. It left me emotional. It left me, how, how did it leave me? It left me, I couldn't get enough of this book. So I don't wanna like say too many things about giving away stuff, but this book just really tugged at my heart. This book is real. This book is about mental health and being lost and stuck. It's like, no matter what, no matter how hard you think someone's there for you, if you have something set in your mind, you're gonna accomplish it. So I'll just do a quick little back read. Theodore Finch is fascinated by death, but every day he also searches for and manages to find something to keep him here and alive and awake. Violet, Mark lives for the future, counting the days until graduation, where she can escape her small Indiana town, her ache and grief, and the wake of her sister's death. When Fitch and Violet meet, it's unclear who saves whom. Soon it's only with Violet that Finch can be himself, and it's only with Finch that Violet forgets to count away the days and starts living them. But as Violet's world grows, Finch's begins to shrink. It is like a teenage book, like an adult read, but I love the love in it. I love the, the power of love, and just becoming like obsessed with somebody. I don't know, I just thought this was a really good book. And they also have the movie on Netflix, which I watched immediately and it was so good. So that's just at my heart book. The next book, Jodi Picoult, Leaving Time. I read this years ago um, and I honestly forgot how the ending went. And then I read it again. Psh, mine blown, this book is so good. I love Jodi Picoult, she is my favorite author. I love how she does different chapters that have the different people, you know? So like one is Alice and then the other one is Virgil, and then there's Serenity, I think. I'm never bored with this book because it's always somebody's different perspective telling the story. My friend did read it, and she wasn't really into all the details of the elephants because it has a lot of information about elephants. I love descriptive books. I love books that give me all the information possible. I am a sponge, and I absorb all of it. So I personally liked all of the scientific facts about elephants. You still have to read this book. I remember also when I read this years ago, I put the book down, I laid in my bed, and I just cried. I definitely felt this book. For more than a decade, Jenna Metcalf has never stopped thinking about her mother, Alice, who mysteriously disappeared in the wake of a tragic accident when Jenna was only three years old. Refusing to believe that her mother would have abandoned her, Jenna pours over the pages of Alice's old journals, which yield few clues. Desperate to find the truth, Jenna enlists two alleys in her quest, Serenity Jones, a psychic, and Virgil Stanhope, the jaded private detective who originally investigated Alice's case. As the unlikely threesome begin to piece together what happened to Alice, Jenna's memory starts to dovetail with the events in her mother's journals revealing a series of events far more shocking than any of them could have ever predicted. Definitely unpredictable. Okay, book number three, The Kite Runner. Oh man, this book is, I feel like a lot of the books that I read this year, they just like keep going with impossible. All right, nothing else can happen. Nothing else can happen. And this book left me there with reading it. I'm like, okay, oh, oh my God, are you serious? Starting from the beginning, it went off quick. Um, and then I created this like hate towards one of the characters. And I just, no matter what he did, no matter her, where he traveled, because he went from the Middle East to America, and I was just like, F you, dude. But as I kept reading, my views changed and it just became this super crazy book. I realized that because something happened in your past, that does not determine your future. What you did a long time ago does not 
need to be held over your head or you need to live life with regret and fear of what you did. It shows that even if you do something crazy, you can have a great outcome in life. And that's what I really love from this book. This guy was a freaking coward, okay? So I'll read the back. The unforgettable, heartbreaking story of the unlikely friendship between a wealthy boy and the son of his father's servant. Caught in the tragic sweep of history, the Kite Runner transports readers to Afghanistan at a tense and crucial moment of change and destruction. A powerful story of friendship, it is also about the power of reading, the power of betrayal, and the possibility of redemption. An exploration of the power of fathers over sons, their love, their sacrifices, their lies. There's not that many books that I've read that have history in the Middle East and I really liked that it was a whole different scenery and a setting for me that I learned. This book, man, I mean even thinking about it I'm getting chills. It just goes on and on and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and I couldn't put it down. I finished that book in like two days. That was a awesome book and like they said, which, what did it say? betrayal and redemption. I'm not gonna sit there and let something define me. No matter how effed up it was, no matter how intense. <laughs> the second book. This, I shouldn't even, it should be like, <laughs> the second book. Oh, wait. A Little Life by Hanya Yanagara. Holy F bomb, what the F, what the fuck? I don't understand. This book is a, as you can see, a very lengthy book. It is over 800 pages. It took me a little bit of time to read. You gotta get into it. You gotta finish it. You gotta read it and finish it. Unimaginable is what I would say when I finish reading this book. There was multiple times when I'm reading this book and I had to take a break and kind of evaluate my life and really be thankful for what I have. I mean, I'm reading and I'm like, okay, hold up. I have a roof over my head. I'm happy. People go through this? This is what people go through? Like, I'm lost. When it says a little life, there couldn't have been a better title for this book. It was, it is a little life. This book is intense. This book has all the feels. You have to be mentally prepared to read this book. You have to be honestly in a good space to read this book. You gotta be prepared to read this book. You gotta, and you gotta experience the emotions too because there's a couple times where I read, reread it. I'm like, wait, did I really just read that correctly? Did that really just happen? And like I said, I had to put the book down and just breathe because it's that heavy. This is the literally heaviest book I've read and literally emotionally the heaviest book I have ever read. I love every single detail about the book, so I'm glad that there was a lot going on. This book also talks about the life of four people. Well, that's what it says, but it really is not about the life of four people. It's mainly about one person, and they're all sidelines kind of in his life. They should have wrote the back in a different way, saying it's mostly about Jude, but I would not have wanted the book to change in any way at all. I would not change a single thing about this book. And then last is where the crawdads sing. I know why it is a top seller. I know why this is one of the best books out there. The best book out there. I mean, I wish my mind would be erased so that I can reread it again and then it be erased again and then reread it again because I've never felt so empowered. I've never felt so, in a book like, yes, I've never been so excited. I've never like, it's like a murder mystery, but like this woman who comes from like rags and how she literally changes her life and the stuff that she's went through, they call her the Marsh Girl. She's living in the trenches basically, having to fend for herself, having to feed herself because her mom left and her dad is alcoholic and he's always gone and literally living by herself. She's not going to school, she is uneducated and she learns how to literally build her life after trauma, after everything that's been handed to her. And again, like it's also a love story and I think it was just so beautiful. There's a couple parts where I was like, ooh. Um, with the little love scenes. It was just very touching and it was a breath of fresh air. I read this book and I felt, whoa, like, whoa. Did that, did I read that right? This is a beautifully written book. The storyline is just amazing. Nothing like I've ever read before either. A lot of stories are like, oh, it's a murder mystery. Who kills who? But it's like a murder mystery plus like depth and love and power. She just held, she just became so powerful and she really did something with her life. And this will forever be one of the best books I've ever read in my life. I recommend every single person to read this book, every single person. I didn't realize I forgot to read the back of the book. For years, rumors of the Marsh Girl have haunted Barkley Cove, a quiet town on the North Carolina coast. So in late 1969, when the handsome Chase Andrews is found dead, the locals immediately suspect Kaya Clark, the so-called Marsh Girl. 
But Kai is not what they say. Sensitive and intelligent, she has survived for years alone in the marsh that she calls home, finding friends in the gulls and lessons in the sand. Then the time comes when she yearns to be touched and loved, when two young men from town become intrigued by her wild beauty. Kai opens herself to a new life until the unthinkable happens. Literally, the unthinkable happens. Read this book. And I'm curious to see what 2021 is gonna bring with all the books, because I have a huge list. So, thanks for watching this video. I hope you give it a thumbs up. I hope you subscribe. I obviously hope you check out these books because they're great and you will not be disappointed. I'll put my Goodreads link below if you wanna follow me. Let's start 2021 with some great books. Thanks for watching.